Auzu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim we will continue reading the book of targhib and this is chapter number 9 the title is blessings of dua uh, supplications the blessing of supplication like prayer like dua and in arabic it's called al dua al mustah al mustajab so there is an introduction Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala demanded from people to call upon him and he confirmed his acceptance to their dua whoever refuses to call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is considered too arrogant and not humble to call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there are rules and regulations timings and places behaviors and manners people have to consider the positions and contents of their dua all of these and many more if taken into consideration will help us achieve the answers to our dua factors of acceptance as far as the factors needed for the dua to be accepted and to be answered the following is a short summary number 1 belief in allah subhanahu wa taala obeying to allah subhanahu wa taala calling in a state of whole heartedness like privacy fear and hope and the arabic words for these are whole heartedness tadaru tadaru privacy mean khufia fear mean khaf and hope mean tama our earnings including food drinks and clothings are all to be halal otherwise the dua will not be accepted seeking the help of allah subhanahu wa taala while a person is sincere honest and truthful in surah ghaffar the surah about the believers in surah ghafir it's not ghafar ghafir one factor is mentioned it is that of sincerity and allah subhanahu wa taala says the following fad'u allah mukhlisin lahu ad-din walau karah walau karihal kafirun and this is the surah number 40 and this was the aya number 14 and the translation is you call then upon allah will sin- with sincere devotion to him even though the unbelievers may detest it so these factors are essential for a dua to be executed to be executed momentarily or it could be delayed as long as allah subhanahu wa taala decides the dua of hazrat zakaria alaihi salam was accepted immediately while he was still praying in the masjid in the uh, in the masjid al aqsa allah subhanahu wa taala gave him a glad tidings of an offspring by the name of yahya to be a prophet In Surah Ali Imran the Quran states the following and there are two surahs uh, two ayahs from the Surah Ali Imran number 38 and 39 I'm going to read the translation there did Zakaria pray to his lord saying o my lord grant unto me from you a progeny that is pure for you hear you hears prayer while he was standing in prayers in the chamber the angels called and called unto him allah does give you glad tidings of yahya confirming the truth of a word from allah subhanahu wa taala and he besides noble chaste and a prophet of the goodly company of the righteous so the third element is the group of people 
the following is a partial list of people uh, partial list of group of people whose dua has been assured to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala number eight the desperate number two those who those where injustice was inflicted upon them number three father against son number four a just leader or a, or a ruler number five a good person number six a good child for his parents number seven a traveler number eight a fasting person till he breaks his fast number nine a muslim to a muslim in absentia number ten a muslim who does not ask injustice dissension or an immediate answer number eleven a person who comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with repentance. Number 12, a person who makes dua with the greatest names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anytime Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts our, your dua, you should be grateful to him by saying, Alhamdulillah, illazi bi ni'matihi tatim, tatim salihat. Praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for an for ending our activities with his blessings. We should call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all his beautiful names in order that he will bless us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Isra, night travel, the surah about the night travel, the following, and I will read the translation. It's a surah number 17 <coughs> and it's ayah number 110. Say, call upon Allah or call upon Rahman. By whatever name you call upon him, it is well. For to him belong the most beautiful names. Neither speak your prayer aloud, nor speak it in a low tone, but seek a middle course between. If anyone is out of a job and he is loaded with debt, debts and if that person could not find any job and could not pay his loans his best dua is the following dua of the prophet and this is taken from the tirmizi and i'll read you the translation O oh allah make the halal sufficient for me rather than haram and make me wealthy from your favors rather than from anyone else. The fourth factor is the position, time and place. Position, time and place where the dua is most likely to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the following. During sujood, when we are doing the sajda, during prostration the night before Friday and all day of Friday. Between Ikama and Salat. Between the two Khutbah of Friday congregation. At the time when a Muslim army meets a non-Muslim army. At the time when rain comes down. At the time of Sahar or pre-dawn. Laylatul Qadr or the night of power night of power the Laylatul Qadr is is the odd number of nights during the last 10 days of Ramadan it is any one of those we don't know which one so we need to seek Laylatul Qadr the night of power during the last 10 days of Ramadan not every day but only on the odd nights odd number of odd number of nights like 21 and 23 and 25 and 27 and 29 during those nights of Ramadan. The day of Arafah, the day before Eid al-Adha, the feast of sacrifice, the day of Arafah is one of the day during the Muslim annual pilgrimage to Mecca, what we call Hajj, which is, which is an obligatory obligation once in a lifetime for every Muslim who can afford. 
during the month of Ramadan, the month of fasting, the prayers are accepted. After each salat, like after each prayer, the five times of prayer, when Muslims are gathering for congregation, when you get together for a jamaat, whenever there is a get together for zikr or remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after drinking water of zamzam, when closing the eyes of the deceased, dua during the easy life and then during difficulty. It should be mentioned here that there is nothing to change the decision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in accepting a dua. The power of the dua is so important that Muslims should benefit from it. So the final remarks, it is a good idea to reflect on this topic with this hadith a Qudsi of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who reported it on behalf of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. It goes as follows and it is taken from as narrated by Hazrat Ans Anhu. There are four characteristics, one of which is for me, one for you, the people, one between me and you, and one between you and my servants, people. The one for me is that you don't associate with me, anyone with me. And that means like anyone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one for you is whatever you do good, I will reward you for the one between me and you is that you make a dua and I am to answer it. And the one between you and my servants is to be pleased for them similar to what you want to be pleased for yourself. And that's again narrated from Hazrat Ans as a hadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked. These are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as described in this hadith by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To benefit from what has been written concerning dua, let us improve our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and let us keep in touch with him days and nights. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our dua, inshallah ta'ala, ameen, thumma ameen. Wa akhiru duana, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.